today what we're really going to talk about is we're going to be talking about tracking down true MDR. You know, uh, in IT, we love our three-letter acronyms. We love them, right? It's, you know, MSP, MDR, you know, SOL, whatever it is, right? So we want to make sure that we're in this scenario where we can really kind of define what these are. And similar to how you can separate these different, you know, MSPs, for instance, when you take a look at MSPs, how you define those three letters is extremely important to identifying what is it this MSP is actually able to do and what capabilities do they have for you. Also similarly true with managed detection and response or MDR. So we want to try to find a way to be able to uh, kind of help define that for you. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Justin Weller. I am the director of product marketing over here at Blackpoint Cyber, uh, but I've actually spent 10 years in the IT industry. Um, you know, I worked for about six years uh, at different MS or an MSP using various roles. I was a level one tech, level two tech, service desk lead, projects engineer, projects manager. Uh, and then uh, before jumping into the MSP focused vendor space for the last four and a half years, I was kind of a lone wolf, kind of a one man shop for for a couple of years uh, on my own. Uh, so my focus here is to really help focus on enablement, technical sales, really make sure that the message can get delivered across the board for uh, MSPs, for what it is that Blackpoint Cyber does, and just general education uh, uh, and thought leadership. On top of that, we've got some really cool panelists here today uh, that I'm really, really excited to, to kind of introduce. Uh, but uh, my, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of hand it off to them kind of over and over. I am excited, kind of the coming out party here for uh, Mr. Mike Estep, who is our brand new, newly minted, uh, freshly anointed vice president of communities for Black Point Cyber. So Mike, Go ahead and take the take, mic. Take the mic. Go ahead and take it out and, and kind of give us a little background on yourself. Well, Justin, thank you very much. Um, for those who are looking at the this wonderful PowerPoint slide, you'll notice some similarities between Justin and I. Um, I was in the MSP business. Um, still kind of feel like I am just because Justin's running a company that's now 49 years old. Um, Sean's been there for 25 of them, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Um, I've recently stepped from the MSP side. I um, ran Becca for 30 plus years, um, created a platform uh, company with three other co-founders um, called Blue Alliance. And um, as of December 1st, decided to jump over and try to help Blackpoint uh, build a community platform for all of us in the MSP space um, while I still got to uh, help uh, the rest all my previous history kind of moved forward. So excited to be with you today. As Justin mentioned, this is this is the first event. So I'll apologize in advance. I have to go make an, another announcement here for Rejection Con if you're participating in that event that's going on at the same time today. So later in this call, if you see me disappear, it's not because I don't want to be here. It's because I promised uh, Wes Spencer and the gang that I would uh, come to an introduction for another MSP. So Justin, I'll turn it over to you. Justin Estep, I'll turn it over to you. So there's two Justins. <laughs> that's I, not going to get glad there's not, not four to figure out on this call. Not at yeah. all. That'll be the first time, the only time that happens on this call, right? Yeah, no, the only time. Um, so I am... Justin Step, I have been in the IT industry now for about 10 years, uh, very similar to Justin Weller. I started out as a level one tech, kind of worked my way up through the ranks as a project engineer, went to school for computer science, uh, kind of fell in love with code script, became an account manager, project manager, and around three years ago, stepped into the chief executive role here at Becca, you know, and have spent the last two years focused in on automation, uh, getting more with less resources, kind of optimizing everything Becca has done to put us on a growth trajectory, you know, that'll help us move forward, you know, hunting out strategic partners like Blackpoint, you know, and of course, I can't do that without the person who helps vet all my technology. So at this point, I'll pass it over to Sean. Hi, everyone. Sean Barron. I've been in the IT industry for 25 plus years, um, have done you know, thousands of projects uh, in the IT space at this point, data center, security projects. I have really seen the evolution of the MSP space. I've seen the evolution of uh, security uh, threats, as well as the evolution of you know the solutions of those security threats. So um, just, I guess you could say I'm an old school sysadmin. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm also super jealous with the combined knowledge that you guys have here and experience in IT and somehow still all have nice full heads of hair. That uh, <laughs> is not, uh, that's not common. Uh, and uh, as you can see from myself as well. So cool. All right. Well, hey, thanks so much for the introductions, you guys. We're, we're going to go ahead and kind of just really jump into this today. You know, we've got some content that we think is going to be really helpful. So again, if you have questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, uh, go ahead and, and throw them in the chat, throw them in the, the Q&A. We want to go ahead and get those answered here. But, you know, let's jump into exactly why we're here today. What is it that we're here to talk about? And we really want to talk about how do you define true manage detection and response you know and one of the 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 oldest and and most trusted names in the industry when it comes to research when it comes to forward thinking when it comes to you know where you know pathways have started to where they're at to where they're going uh, is definitely gartner right gartner is 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 a really great source of of kind of giving some very specific terms kind of clarity, bringing some some walls around some, some vagueness, if you will. So, you know, according to Gartner, here's what they say. MDR services provide customers with remotely delivered, human-led, turnkey modern SOC functions, ultimately delivering threat disruption and containment. In a nutshell, that's kind of what MDR is. If you're missing any of these components, now there's more that comes to it, right? There's other optional pieces that you could add, those kinds of things, correlation, kind of, you know, orchestrated platforms, that kind of stuff kind of puts you outside of this, but in, in the positive way and more the forward thinking way. But as a baseline, this is exactly what Gartner says. Really quick, you know, Mike, Justin, Sean, what do you guys think about this kind of definition? What do you think about, uh, you know, did Gartner nail it or uh or or do you want to send an email to them tell them they got it wrong um i think this definition covers most of what we'd look for in true mdr i think the only piece that they kind of missed is somewhere along the clause of a true mdr helps cover the your most important threat vectors you know previously we talked about products that would cover networking or cover the endpoint and now we started to talk about covering the cloud a true MDR uh, would start to say a holistic approach. It should cover mm. all attack points. That makes sense. Mike, Sean, anything on on that as well? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think uh, you know Justin kind of hit on it as well as to me the the important part in that is the human led part of it because mm. at the end of the day, in order in order to really take all of this data in and you know quickly make a decision and you know stop a threat it really requires that human led uh component of the mdr service i mean you know the the software and the automation is going to tell you that something's up but you don't really right. know what that threat is and what the extent is and that's where the human led part comes in yeah i mean listen justin i i know sean and i've spent years and years and years talking about this and that the 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 challenge has now become what are you doing at seven you know, or, or at, you know, it's, it's Sunday night at three in the morning, you need live people. You have to be able to respond with people as soon as you can and, and know that a human is visiting it as much as automation is wonderful, as much as, you know, with all this talk of AI at some point in time, a live human being has to make the call. And that that's, you know, as I have one of my standing comments has been, you know, that's one of the reasons when we were originally partnering with Blackpoint, we were trying to accomplish someone worrying about this and not having to wait on a pager right. duty service to go off or something like that. That's today, most MSPs struggle to be seven by 24 by 365 right. with, with 10 people in each time slot. Everybody may have right. one, but, you know, let's face it, that's the challenge with security. Well, well and, and, and not just, oh, go ahead. No, so so more importantly, you know, to the human led, it, and it Mike kind of brought up, you know, you know, 3 a.m. on a Sunday morning, but 3 a.m. on a Sunday morning and getting someone engaged who this is right. what they do. This is right. their specialty. Again, 3 a.m., you know, all the MSPs got someone that can handle a down server, uh, but having that skill set, right. this is what they're focused on. You know, this, you know, time to react is so critical and knowing exactly what are the next steps to take is so critical. You have to have the people that are 
totally focused on this and not like a typical MSP where, you know, we do a little bit of everything and yeah, we, right. we do some security stuff and we're good and you know, we can do it, but this, you know, in these situations, it just requires that, you know, that skill set of this is what I do. This is what I'm focused on. This is what I think about all the time. Um, it makes a huge difference into the end result. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, in, in 2023, I mean, as an MSP, if we don't have somebody not taking any tickets, they're not worried about maintenance. They're not worried about servers being down. Their number one focus needs to be ingesting and responding to, and and not ingesting, but ingesting, interpreting, and responding to quickly security events, right? I mean, to to, to Mike's point, right? Um, I mean, it, it it's crazy. The, Listen, I, I've said this before on a number of different a number of different platforms, but you know these threat actors they're, they're, they they may be immoral, but they're not stupid. You know, I mean they they understand how this software works. They know about time zones. They know when you guys are sleeping. They know when you're awake. Like I say, they're like terrible Santa Claus, right? They're they're never going to attack yep. in a way to to just say, oh well, you know what? It's two in the afternoon. Let's go after it. That's why a lot of these major breaches, like I mean, I know SOC services. We for instance, we are on high alert if it's a long weekend if it's a if it's a holiday weekend man i mean all of the flags are up everybody's on everybody's on call why because these threat actors know that that you know it's if, if it's two o'clock on a friday most it people are already thinking about that long weekend because we work hard right and that's kind of the way that it is and to the second point i would also agree it's a fantastic time to be in the MSP market. I mean, we've got a lot of data that shows how it's going to grow, how the trajectory is going to happen and what's growing it. But there's a massive headwind, which is the lack of talent. There is a shortage of talent. I know a personal uh, friend of mine that had a level two networking engineer requisition open for almost two years, two years to find a level two networking tech because the talent just isn't out there right now. And when you talk about that, you've got to have really good sysadmin fundamentals, really good network admin fundamentals in order to even start being a really good security analyst, right? Because if you don't have those fundamentals, sure. you can't understand how those things are being weaponized in today. So if you have a problem on the front end, you're having a massive problem on the back end. So even if you can find that person that is willing to work at three o'clock in the morning, they're probably not cheap and they're probably being headhunted like crazy right now, right? So there's all those different things as well. But, you know, this is kind of those problems that you saw, just the logistic problems of being an MSP in a world where attacks are becoming more sophisticated, they're becoming faster, they're pivoting from uh, 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 stealth into speed, right? I mean, they're using Rust to encrypt, we're seeing partial encryption now, so they can get it, we're seeing them trickle data out quickly. So that way they can try to hit you as soon as possible and maybe double ransomware or double extortion you, whatever the case may be. Right. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of this sophistication later, but all of those reasons that we just discussed is really why Gartner sees the market doubling over the next year, about in the next couple of years. It says by 2025, 60% of organizations will be actively using remote threat disruption and containment capabilities delivered directly by a true MDR provider. And that's up from 30% today. And this isn't just MSPs that they're talking about. They're talking about organizations worldwide or whatever the 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 the, the breadth of the the, the scope of, of this of this study was for. So the fact is this: we're not just talking MSPs, we're talking organizations companies. Right now, 30% of the companies are being actively protected, which by the way, is a terrifyingly low number. But with that being said, doubling that in just a couple of years is a massive, massive thing. But again, I think we also kind of understand the need for that. But here is really where I want to kind of get to it. Why do we need to define this? Right? Like, why is this so hard? I think at this point, everybody kind of understands okay, we need somebody watching the house 24 hours a day. That's just the name of the game. And I think one of the biggest reasons why, and you tell me this, if you think, uh, you know, what your thoughts are on this, like the pivot to the cloud, I feel like has completely thrown gasoline on a fire that used to be tough a few years ago to put out. But now because everybody's moved to the cloud, everybody's put all their data up there, all of their authentication, all of their identities are being used. I mean, how many times can you go to you know, a website and sign in with your Google account identity and sign in with your Microsoft identity, right? Everything is moved to the cloud. So what used to be this little tiny itty bitty area that we everyone used to wake up every morning, go to this little spot and all I had to do is protect this spot. Let me put my fence up around here. Well, now, 
I can, I got to protect the world. I've got to be protected from the literal world. That's why we're seeing Microsoft 365 is by and far the largest attack vector that's out there because that's the one that everyone is using. So do you think that that's kind of one of the main reasons why this problem has just seemed to explode over the last few years? I don't know if it's the reason why it's exploded. I think it's made it just that much more complicated. Um, I think I think Good. the challenge, even if hey, even if you were still on prem, the challenges in the way that the attackers are working and the vulnerabilities are still there. Um, you know, when you just look at the explosion of vulnerabilities and how quickly they're identified in software packages, I think you'd have the same vulnerabilities, um, and you would need the same tool, you know, the, the MDR sure. tool that we're talking about. I think the fact that we now have this really soft edge of the network with cloud services, I think it makes it right. just, it makes the problem that's much harder to solve. Yeah. So it sounds like it kind of, what you're saying is the, the attack surface has grown dramatically, right? I mean, if, if you really, to be an IT professional today, you, you're kind of responsible for protecting the internal the you know the on-premise side the cloud side and then the hybrid side right what about the people that jump back and forth you know what i mean how about like hey i got i got to be protected in here and i got to be protected in here right, right? that's got to be super difficult well yeah, and justin there was a post and i know sean would get kicked out there was a post the other day i seen by somebody that said i can't believe you still have on-prem exchange there are large enterprise clients right. who are destined to have on-prem exchange for the majority of their future. Um, so th it's this, like many things, you know, this has become a large moneymaker. There's a stat that says, you know, the, the, the cyber business from a bad guy standpoint is larger than the, you know, the, the worldwide drug market. I mean, that's, what's driving it is, it's it's being driven by financial reward by the people who are winning the dollars each time they you know they compromise somebody and that's not going to stop and you know anytime soon because we're still so dependent on what's on our computer systems from a day to day basis and, and man they have become so sophisticated it it's unreal like this this idea of you know we always think of that that kid that's sitting in a you know dark room you know lights out leds behind his monitor with a hoodie on right click clacking away on some computer screen that's got green green words on it right that's not it that that's not it i mean these people they have like ebay style sites where you get to go and now bid on compromised networks right you can customer service emails, customer service phone numbers, like these people wake up and they go to the office, right? And I actually heard uh, an anecdote from one of our SOC analysts a couple of days ago. These threat actors, they're actually hiring legitimate IT service people that believe that they are doing contract work for a legitimate company. They're breaking into other networks. They're, 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 they're doing these things and these maintenance tasks for threat actors, but they have no idea that they're doing the work for these threat actors. It is the most unreal thing, you know? And, and this is kind of where I think a lot of these issues come into play, right? So everybody agrees. We know the problem is exasperated. We know that it's become more complex, but really there's a variety of delivery styles for MDR services. And I think the problem that Gartner identified here was that it's their MDR in name only. Right, we've got these misnamed technology-centric offerings, right? They fail to deliver that human-driven managed detection and response. And this is one of the biggest challenges that I think I see for organizations, enterprises, MSSPs, MSPs, to really how do you buy and how do you, you know, deliver, get that delivery from an outcome-driven provider? Because you know, in the beginning, you know. Evolution or security has always been an evolution, right? Just like IT's always kind of been an evolution. I remember when all you had to have was antivirus. We better have antivirus because, you know, rootkits, those are a problem. You know what I mean? And then, you know, now it went to, okay, cool. Well, that's not good enough. Now I've got to make sure that I've got, you know, uh, 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 you know, malware, uh, malware uh, filtering. And, and then EDR was the next thing. And then SIMs were the thing. And then managed EDR. And then someone's got to be looking at all of your logs and all these different things, right? And so, you know, I think we're, we're a lot of the prevalent places and, and there's a lot of organizations that are out there that are kind of managed EDR, 
on one side, right? They've got their their endpoint detection and response agent that they send alerts uh, to themselves and they'll respond to those alerts for you. But that's one side of the house. The other side of the house is kind of the, the managed SIM, right? SIM being, you know, all of our logs go into this one particular area and now someone has to dig through all of those logs, maybe create some rules or maybe there's organizations that will create those rules for you. But now you've got to kind of respond and kind of take a look into those. Um, you know, what are your guys' experience with kind of some of those, those types of, of providers? providers in the past and, and you know where have they been helpful where have they fallen short uh justin you know one of our biggest experience with you know the providers of the past was this idea of everyone kind of did their own little piece of the puzzle mm. you know so we were all of a sudden kind of building our own what we we're calling today true mdr with four different providers and wow. then it kind of fell to our team to say, well, this tool said something. So now we need to log in and check over here. And all that process was slowing down. So, you know, that was kind of one of our history pieces of, well, well, something went off. It now is going to take 15, 20 minutes to go try to manually check every tool, log into everything. And it's just that slowdown of now it's us kind of getting multiple providers trying to talk to us that don't want to talk to each other. You know, that was definitely a big piece of our past with these older historical, you know, EDR to manage SIM to then just SIM by itself evolution. And it was, and again, it's also, it's that lag time to put the pieces together, right? It's the lag time, you know, SIM, you know, generally those alerts are coming in, you know, in a because you know, you're you're shipping those logs to your SIM provider, whether that's you know an on-prem device or in the cloud. Then there's that lag time for it to you know go through that data and fire off some sort of automated alert, and then the lag time for you to get the alert, you know, get logged in, start taking a look, and then try to make a determination of whether or not you have a problem where. Our focus is as an MSP on delivering, you know, services and you know technology products to our customers. We don't spend all day in the, you know, the the you know cyber hacker world to know what's the latest trend. You know, what are the things that hackers are doing? Um, you know, to to know whether we have a real problem and make that correlation. So when you're looking at that MDR service, you're looking for that partner who's doing those things and they live in that world and they know. These are the things to look out for. When you see these things, these are the things that someone really needs to take immediate action. Um, so it's really, it's the lag time. It's bringing it, because as you right. mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. with, with Rust programming um, and just how the speed at, the, at which this is moving, just we kind of realized that we just were not able to operate at that speed um, to identify those threats and mitigate them. Yeah, sure, I remember I- back in 2020 where we said, we're going to make our own sock. It'll be easy. We'll hire people, pull it off. Yep. Uh, that never came all the way around to finding that talent. Yeah. It's, it's like I said, it's, it's, it's expensive, but it's also tough. And, you know, I remember when I got into it, right. Uh, you guys may have experienced something similar. Everybody was really talking about two tracks, right? You listen, you get in, you get your general understanding of how things work. And then you go down either the sys admin route or you go down the networking route. Like there, you know, you had to understand a little bit of both, but really that was the routes that you went down. And there was security that was involved in either one of those, but you were kind of responsible for understanding the security in your particular lane, right? Well, now in 2023, and actually probably in the last five years or six years or so, security by itself is kind of its own track that comes out of those two tracks. You've got to really understand systems. You've got to understand how they're administered, how the programming works. You've also got to understand networks, right? How how does data traverse? How do you get from this point to this particular point? And then in what ways are those events correlated? And then the most important thing, so it sounds like I'm hearing two things here. Number one, it's not just the, the finding the talent and retaining the talent and the expense of all of those things, but it's also the correlation of the events, the orchestration of the events, taking multiple types of data points and putting them into one central location where I've got a human that understands how all of these pieces talk together, the events are correlated. So we're not kind of threat hunting, right? So, you know, and hear me when I say, I'm not knocking SIMS. I'm not knocking managed EDR. This is all part of a, 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 
um, defense in depth philosophy. Right. We want to make sure that just because attacks have grown and, and they've become more sophisticated. Well, does that mean that, you know, I found a new way into my house? Does that mean that I stop locking my door? No, I'm still going to lock my door. We just got to make sure that we're continuously kind of moving forward with that as well. And so, you know, where Sims were good at one point um, to gather the data, unfortunately, if we're threat hunting off of Sims, like you said, we're threat hunting off of something that has happened. Right. Whereas if these events were orchestrated, we can kind of threat hunt, threat hunt proactively on things that are happening at that particular time. We do want the logs. We want to be able to respond and, and do incident response and incident, those kinds of things, right? But we want to make sure they're right. So um, now the other side that we see as issues for buyers, and this is something that you talked about a little bit earlier there, Sean, um, was that the traditional model of on-premise devices, boundary firewalls, and business-specific endpoint devices, they're fading. It's not that it's ever going to go away. It's not that it's ever going to be zero, just like we're never going to see DMZs gone. And like, there's still going to be use cases for those, right? I think, I think most banks are still using Windows XP for their, uh, for their, for their ATMs and stuff like that, right? Like that kind of stuff is still going to be a thing, right? But we are seeing a massive drop in that. We're seeing a massive drop in people having to go to the offices, people, uh, you know, boundary firewalls and business, like the line has blurred when it comes to use this specific device that's approved by our organization and is protected perfectly. And now we have people using, you know, BYOD is a massive, massive thing. And, and not only that, we actually, um, what's unique is the sophistication, it's crazy. There was, when we talk about, forget about using BYOD, you know, being in your own home network. There was a, a story that we had here. There was an attack that we stopped because there was an executive at an organization. She was using her business device, protected AV, all of those things, MDR, everything's on her business device. In her home network, there's a threat actor that had compromised her son's jailbroken Xbox and then utilize that as an entry point into the network to try to laterally spread to the business computer that her mom was using. So these are just some things that we're kind of talking about. What do you guys think about, you know, the fading of these endpoint devices? Yeah, so Justin, we kind of refer to, we started to call it, you know, we went from trying to secure our castle, which was the office to putting things in these bubbles, you know, the right. idea of hypoallergenic, you're, when someone takes a device out of the building, it goes in its bubble. And we are definitely seeing that blur of now, can we put software in a bubble? You know, managed application, I'm sorry, mobile application management's become a thing trying to counteract this BYOD of saying, well, I just now need to put the data in a bubble. Uh, and it is definitely blurring the lines of these devices, you know, from what we traditionally would have seen in IT probably even just five years ago, you know, it has definitely make, made the maze of securing things significantly more complex. Yep. Well, Justin, what I'll, I'll say this. You said before the line has, you know, faded or the line has turned gray. The line is gone. Hmm. I mean, we have, you know, I know in Becca's case with Sean and Justin, they, they have clients that, now have you know a thousand people operating via an iPad with no offices. Right. You know the 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 new world of use of a device is it's it's not going to come back in the building full time. It, you know we'll be hybrid for the next few years, and there will even be certain business models that have now been developed because of what we can do. <clears throat> apologize you know um you know the ability with cloud apps to use an ipad as a computing device is here right. but we still have to protect it i mean it's True. you know i apple can sell sell all they want that they're better at security but we all know that's just a belief not the reality of life right. so as i have a standing joke with everybody in that you know protecting our users isn't going to get easier from any point going for the next, it's not. you know, at least in my lifetime. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think I think you're starting to have instead of just having the castle, you're having multiple castles. And I always think right. of the IDP, 
you know, so if you're a Microsoft 365 shop, that becomes a new castle because, you know, even if you're using other cloud applications, you can run your authentication through that as your IDP. Right. So that becomes that really important castle that you have to protect because all of this stuff has to go through that IDP. Yeah. And, and you know, that, that definitely kind of comes into these next couple of points, right? There, these different castles, you know, we traditionally, right? When we talk about this thing called lateral spread, lateral spread is, is essentially, you know, I, I like to use the analogy of civilization. Did you guys ever play civilization before back yeah. in the day? The game? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> so for anybody on this call or watching this later, that's never heard the, 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 or never played the game. Civilization's like a, 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 you know, you start off with a settler and you build a city and you kind of grow your empire out from there. But with the way the game starts is that every single time you start, you start with this little tiny view of the map that you have. And now your job is to build your city, but also explore. I've got to find out how powerful am I? Where can I go? Who else is playing this game? What's going on? The same thing is true for threat actors, right? It's the end of the day they get onto a device they don't know if it's you know uh, or they compromise an account in the cloud they don't really know like hey what power do i have they start to go exploring and as they explore to other areas and and other devices and other accounts that's called lateral spread right so here's the thing what we're seeing is we're seeing them, you know, traditionally it used to be lateral spread would be like internal to internal. I'm on a laptop. I found out it's in a corporate network. I'm now jumping onto a server or file server or trying to get access to where I want to go. Or I'm in the cloud, right? I've got this particular account. Does it have access to anything else in M365? Can I do those kinds of things? But it traditionally been layered away. And now we're starting to see where these attackers are layering these different things. These as as the line has blurred from cloud to on premise, we're starting to see these these attacks get more sophisticated. And to your other point, Sean, the identity has become ever more important, right? I mean, we've got this commonality, and, and by and large, you know, probably the two largest identity providers that we see just in general, as far as the public is using, um, is going to be M three sixty five and Google Identities. Right, those are going to be by and far the largest of the two. You know, M365 significantly larger than Google, but still even so, right? All these applications, all these subscriptions, all this data sharing across the board, all these identifying, and you know, here I've got access to this. Just use your Microsoft account. These are becoming more and more important, and people are you know not understanding. Hey, it's not just my email that's getting compromised. If I'm using M365 and my M365 account gets compromised, what about those 20 other websites I've used Microsoft to log into? Well, now those are compromised all at the exact same point, right? And so I think all of this being that kind of holistic thing that we were talking about is the most important part. What are some points you guys want to make on those? So I will kind of pick on IDPs, you know, in general real quick of, you know, how important it is to watch and secure them because today by default they're terrible about securing themselves <laughs> you know microsoft the default configuration is any user when they want to use it to set up an sso they can click the accept button for their account which gets right. their data their email structure and some of their key profile information maybe phone number title kind of just out there as something they can consent to you know instead of saying hey we need to really look into what sh who you're giving your information to, because right. that becomes the foothold for the next social engineering attack. You know, if someone accidentally gives away their title and phone number to the wrong person just by connecting it to the IDP because they can click accept, it is setting us up to where we don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah, and if you don't have somebody watching that, right? I mean, how, like, it, it, I I can see mm -hmm. how crazy that is. Definitely, definitely, and. and we're we're seeing it here internally as well. You know, um, this is not obviously supposed to. I'm not here to be on a sales pitch, but what's <laughs> unique about Blackpoint is uh, we actually recently just came out with our um, our identity response for Azure product, where we can now contextualize. You know, as um, identity accounts are being breached, we can contextualize. Hey, where was it breached? Where was it misused? Those kinds of things as well. And 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 uh, we definitely see the. Uh, the horizon on what's happening here, right? We're we're forward forward focused on that, and our goal is to to probably go really deep on that. Hint hint, nudge nudge over the next uh, over the next couple of quarters here as well, but uh, definitely. Well, 
you know, I think all of this kind of boils down to, to really one key question. And, you know, if you guys uh, at home are, are taking a, a screenshot uh, of anything, uh, this would probably be the one that, that I would, I would uh, make sure to take the screenshot of, you know, you know, what you really need to focus on and what you really need to look for in some sort of a true MDR is baseline this, this is the minimum barrier to entry when it comes to managed detection and response. First thing is it's got to be able to be remotely delivered, right? I mean, it's it's 2023. You can't be bouncing around. I mean, we're we're not rolling a truck to everybody's house to set it up. There shouldn't need to be some sort of a on-premise requirement. I've got to set up this appliance to capture the data to fire it back. It, you just got to be able to make sure that it's something that can be remotely delivered, administered, and, and monitored. The second piece um, is really it has to be human led. There has to be some sort of active human response inside of this. In in no way, shape, or form is is an alert at two thirty in the morning really going to cut it anymore, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to make sure that it's an active response because, as you see here, it's got to be a turnkey response as well, right? They there really shouldn't be a whole lot of configuration required for the MDR side. It's got to be quick. It's got to be easy to set up, and it's got to turn on like that. But it's also got to be modern. It's not going to be something where we're threat hunting off of logs, we're threat hunting off of, you know, uh, only kind of managed EDR type alerts. It's got to be something that is going to include the actual behavior that these threat actors are utilizing. And there needs to be a disruption and containment of the actual threat, right? It's, again, kind of to the point earlier about the, the alert, right? Sending the alert, that's great. It's awesome to have the information that something's happening. But if that threat isn't disrupted and it's not contained in a short period of time, it really doesn't count as managed detection and response. What do you guys kind of think about some of these points here? Um, again, I'll, I'll focus on the human-led part of it because again, you know, the, the MDR provider is an extension, as an MSP, it's, it, you know, Blackpoint is an extension of our service department. Right. So with that, there has to be, you know, just like our customers trust us with the level of access that we have, you know, we have to, you know, we have to find a, a partner that we can trust um, you know, with that same level you know, that our customers trust us because at the end of the day, you know, I'm now trusting this other partner. So the human led component in, and really, you know, as an MSP, when you're choosing who you want to be your MDR partner is really vetting that and really building that trust. Um, you know, the technology, you know, everybody can have great technology, but to me, the key component is the human led because that's the piece that's really being added to our stack. And so, you know, find someone that you can build a trust relationship with and and know that they're going to, you know, they're going to do what they say that they're going to do, that they have good, uh, they have good operational uh, procedures, that they're efficient. Um, you know, the human led part is, is the key to me. Agreed. Yeah. And uh, talking about the turnkey aspect, you know, as MSPs, one of our goal uh, is to grow our client base every day. You know, if we were sitting here saying we need to look at for proper security, a proper threat response, spend three months talking about every application, every potential item that yeah. could trigger a report before we can even turn on security, you know, 90 days in, that's a long time for threat actors uh, as, you know, we're trying to build that trust relationship very quickly as a provider, you know, being able to say, hey, our MDR partner, you know, we're going to put it on and go, you know, typically I think the fastest deployment we saw with you guys was it took us about, call it, I think, or the longest maybe might've been 36 hours to get on to 98% of all the endpoints, you know, now helps that we had in tune and full control with an RMM, but to go, Hey, look how fast we can secure this by the click of a button. It wasn't, let's sit down, talk about it. It was, we're going to look, and then we're going to tell you what we see. We're going to stop. We're going to disrupt in the middle. And then we'll filter out what was a false positive instead of trying to go the other way around. Yeah, yeah I, I think really, I, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I think, you know, the, the, again, having a little bit of history in this, you know, before, whenever you were deploying new security technology to a customer, you were so worried about, 
you know, taking the customer's business offline. And so right. you're, you're kind of slow rolling this. And, you know, today I think the approach is, look, you know, if, if I roll this out tomorrow to a customer and it, you know, sees threats and, you know, locks down their network, I mean, I'm okay. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I, you know, that's what I want to happen. I don't want right. to be in this position of, okay, I need to slow roll it, make sure we get all the rules configured and do all the things because it just moves too quickly. So let's roll it out, um, you know, remotely delivered. I don't need to figure out, do I got an, a VM appliance? I got to, you know, deploy to collect logs and, you know, does the customer have enough space in their, their virtual environment? It's just like, put the agent on it, start collecting the data. And as soon as you see something, you know, go into threat disruption and, and threat containment immediately. Yep. Well, Mike, I know I know we've only got you for a few more minutes, and I know you have something to say about this slide. So I'll I'll let you kind of finish this finish this one off. Well, to <clears throat> and as you said before, this isn't meant to be a sales pitch, but living the life of an MSP owner, then you know, seeing and, and I was a former engineer, you know, Sean and I grew up, you know, kind of being the, you know, kind of, you know, tip of the spear for us and the things we did. I mean knowing that somebody's worrying about it when we're trying to sleep is a, an extreme benefit because that's what age taught me was age taught me at some point in time, you do need to take a break. You need, do need to step away. And as yeah. all this is advanced so fast, it's impossible. And trust me with, with our holding organization that we built with blue Alliance, we looked at, should we just you know build this ourselves? it's better to partner with somebody who is already doing it and understands it. So Justin Weller, as you mentioned, I got to run to another call. So to everybody on the call, I will also tell you that we're spending a lot of time today talking about things that are about, you know, this is what we're going to do. The, the beauty of black point and what intrigued me is the suite of products has prevention in it too. As we now look at, you know, uh, application awareness and things that we're going to do at the app level to start to bring in, you know, curated zero trust is a, a word that I once used. Um, know that we're evolving very quickly that way. And when you're partnering with somebody, this is, you know, this is not an official, you know, I'm still the new guy. So I get to say things like, and nobody's kind of stepped on me yet. You know, what's important to me is I need a partner who, is going to see something and stop something. I don't need see something and say something. I need see something and stop something. So, you know, I'll let the rest of the crew handle questions or MA. Thanks for everybody. And uh, appreciate you being tolerant of my schedule as uh, we were doing this. It was great to, this is my first one. So you'll be, uh, hopefully uh, if anyone needs anything, Justin and Cody can share my contact information. We'd love to have you build the community. Awesome. Oh, sorry about that. You guys looks like I went offline there for a quick second. Thanks, here. Mike. Yeah, definitely. Well, cool. Well, um, man, just want to say thanks so much, Mike. Enjoy. And uh, we'll kind of jump through here. So uh, we had a couple of uh, questions kind of pop through here as well that I want to answer. So first one's from Jim Decker. Uh, does Blackpoint go through resellers as well or just MSPs? So 100% uh, of our go-to-market strategy for the most part is actually focused on MSPs. We really want to partner uh, with MSPs to kind of push this, this vision forward. However, we are currently also in the Pax8 marketplace. So hopefully that answers the question for you as well. Something recent uh, that just started with us a few weeks back here. And then uh, this is something I kind of want uh, Justin and Sean to talk a little bit here from Rune. He asked a question, can't everyone with some money and using third-party solutions have some pen testers running shift? Um, I mean, the short, yeah, I, the short answer is sure, but sure. Let's, uh, let's, let's talk about, let's, I think there's a little bit of a deeper question there for sure. Yeah, it's, it's the deeper question of, um, Yes, you can you can roll your own and do it yourself, and we have done various pieces and parts of that. Um, one of the things um, that when when we started having initial conversations with Blackpoint, one of the things was you know the emphasis and focus on being in that you know bad actor community, knowing what are the things that they are doing, and being focused on those things to know that okay these are the techniques. Um, these are the live off the land 
techniques that they're using and just having that experience with it again as I, I think I mentioned, you know, we're an MSP and we're focused on a lot of different things that we do for our customers. And I think security has just become one of those areas where you just have to really be specialized. And that's what you and that's what you do. And and again, it, you know, there's there's a lot of cost in getting your own internal security uh, department up and running inside your MSP. And um, you know, yeah, if you want to invest the 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 money into doing that. Um, you know, we were at a point where we needed a better security solution for our customers. We didn't have the time or the resources to, you know, invest in kind of doing it ourselves. We needed, we re, we identified we needed something better very quickly. And being part of, you know, that turnkey solution, um, you know, having the threat disruption that Blackpoint provided, it just was an easy, uh, it was an easy solution to deploy. And it got us that that feeling of comfort very quickly that we had someone looking out for us and, and more well, importantly, our customers. And Sean, I would say, you know, if you, I think you'd agree with this. We started to attend an event two, three years ago now for, called right of boom. Yeah. Basically it is a security focused uh, conference. And when we kind of started to sit down and talk with the security professionals, I know last year, the event was held in Texas and they went through and kind of talked through some of the things uh, Alpha and Black Cat were doing to attack networks. We kind of realized you have to be playing in this game with someone 40 hours a week, 52 weeks of the year. Yep. You know, it's not a, oh, I know technology and can kind of have someone part time running pen test right. or doing security because. At that point, you're reacting to already known vulnerabilities, the response pieces of defined definitions. Once you get into the true security professionals, they're hunting how the processor was communicating between right. multiple software layers, uh, right. which is not your typical, we had some extra money lying around. That is a, I needed to invest in <laughs> true security professionals. Um, so... And again, you know, you can you can run and again, we run a vulnerability management platform. We do pen tests and you can do all of those things and you can close all of the the holes that show up, right? You know, hey, we've got a we did a pen test and we've got a perfect report. Um, but someone gets fished, there's there's a, a, a bug in OneNote, you know, take the OneNote incident, right? So they get fished, they open an infected OneNote, and someone's immediately doing something on that machine. You need an immediate response to that. You know, yeah, you didn't, have, you, everything was patched. You didn't have any ports open in your firewall. You know, you're, you're doing all the things, but there's literally no time to react. And the number of vulnerabilities that come out every day now for all the different yeah. software packages, and your center's like, how long has that vulnerability been there? That, right. that no one knew about. It's like, yeah, you know, my pen testing tool tells me about the vulnerabilities that we're all aware of, but it doesn't tell me about the vulnerabilities that, you know, we aren't aware of, but a lot of times the bad actors are aware of them and they're taking advantage of those. So um, again, it yeah. goes back to the speed that you need a response. Yep. And and not just that, I mean, think about just, I mean, the, the oldest game in the book has always been social engineering, right? Yep. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, think about, I mean, why like again i'm not picking on mgm but do you think that they have no budget for security i would argue that a casino in las vegas has a massive budget like there is no check that is too big for them to write but it took a 10 minute phone call to bring an entire organization like that to its knees in a very very short period of time and we started finding out that they weren't the first one they were just the one that made the news Right. And so all of those different things, just having somebody watch it. So that's where, yes, I mean, you can do it. And you mean when I say, it, like I said before, I'm not knocking Sims. I'm not knocking EDR. I'm not knocking pen testing. Right. I no. think all of these things are good, but it's not telling the entirety of the story. And to your point a little bit earlier, Justin, you know, uh, and, and Sean actually as well, this is why having that holistic approach is extremely important. There are many different vectors. There's many different ways that they go about it. And having an organization that we have two sides to our organization, we've got our SOC, which, you know, I hope you understand what I'm saying in the heart, what I'm saying here. 
when there's an attack on one of our customers, it benefits all of our customers. Why? Because we see that attack vector here and now we can start looking for it everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just the internal side of the house. We also have an, a, a branch of our, of, of our organization that they are solely focused on seeing what's happening outside of the house. What are the emerging threats? What are the things and the sophistication? Because to your point about Black Hat, for those of you that don't know Black Hat, Black Hat was super unique because what they did is they took legitimate IT tools, legitimate sysadmin tools that are signed. They're never going to be flagged by an EDR. They're automatically uh, allow listed yeah. in every single one of those EDR solutions. And they weaponized them to automate the attack and discovery of the actual networks, advanced IP scanner to enumerate the IP network, the you know advanced port scanner to identify what open ports there are, you know screen connect, and to to every one of these vendors uh, 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 credit, you know we didn't announce that all of these things were happening. We went to them and we worked with them to close the holes and close the doors. And what's even crazier about Black Hat is they just pivoted to more tools. They ended up just pivoting to other tools. Yeah, we closed them from being able to use Screen Connect as effectively as they were. And then they ended up uh, pivoting to another tool. So this is the level of sophistication that, like to your point, pen testing is just not going to stop, right? So, you know, and this kind of goes into a question that we asked here, uh, got asked by Ruben, which is how does Blackpoint protect remote users working from home or remotely at a hotel from getting compromised? Well, that is all about this slide here. It's a turnkey remote delivered agent, and you can remotely communicate with cloud response, which is our M365 identity and email protection, as well as our Google Workspaces identity and email protection as well. So that way it's all remotely taken care of. I think we, I mean, for an for you know, to Justin's point. 36 hours to get somebody set up on 98% of their endpoints and, and kind of managing that as well. But what I wanted to do just kind of in the in the interest of time here is I really wanted to talk about something really neat that we did here at Blackpoint. Now, I say neat, uh, I don't like giving threat actors um, credit, but also like some of this stuff is really, like I said before, they're, they're not stupid. They're, they're sophisticated individuals that are just playing for the wrong team. But what we were able to do here is we were actually able to take a significantly sophisticated attack, something that I have never seen in all of my life uh, of working in security and IT. And I talked about it earlier. When we talk about lateral spread, traditionally it stays cloud to cloud, in on premise to on premise. This is arguably the first time that I've ever seen a, a lateral spread from the cloud breach, a cloud compromise moving to an on premise network that it has access to. And I don't know, and again, fact check me here, but I, I don't know a whole lot of other organizations or even if there is another organization that could have stopped this. So here's kind of how this whole thing started. There's the initial access, right? The threat actors in some way, shape, or form got access to an Azure network, right? Azure cloud support, right? Phishing, credential theft, maybe there was a breach from another organization and however they got it, they got in. Now, the reason why we don't know how they got it, because we currently weren't, you know, this organization was only on our endpoint managed detection and response. They had not onboarded the cloud response for the Microsoft Azure side yet. So what this threat actor was able to do is they were able to pivot to the Azure cloud support account, modify the password to that account. And because that account had global admin privileges, they had the ability to kind of do pretty much anything that they wanted to do. What they chose to do was they chose to take Intune and create a custom remediation script inside of Intune and set the cadence to run on all devices that are managed by this Intune instance every single day. Now, what you're looking at here, this is kind of what we saw internally inside of our platform. If you're a partner, you've probably seen something like this before. We give really clear transparency into kind of what we're fighting, what we're seeing, those kinds of things, who worked on your individual case or whatever it is. But this is what we're seeing. We're seeing here that there is a detect.ps1 that is being executed for this particular uh, attack that's happening. And so this is what happened. This is how our SOC handled it. 
Our SOC was alerted through our on-premise software called Snap Defense. There was a process violation for an encode, uh, encoded Base64 PowerShell. Our analysts found that that PowerShell was trying to connect, connect to a Russian domain to download a, a RAT or remote access tool. Uh, spoiler alert, anytime we see anybody trying to contact Russia, uh, probably a high probability of something not good happening inside of your network, right? So then what we did is we immediately isolated the device that was in question, but in the investigation, we very quickly found out that the activity source was coming from Intune. And this is what's kind of unique for Blackpoint. We have the ability to identify the start and the end date or the start and the end location of where an attack came from, as well as where it went to, regardless if we're monitoring it or not. So we were able to see this came from Intune. And it indicated just in our experience that an Intune policy had been compromised and was being used to distribute malware. So what we did then is we isolated additional devices, right? We wanted to basically lock the network down, right? We want to not just detect, but also disrupt and contain. And we identified and we contacted this particular organization who we were not managing. We were not managing their cloud infrastructure. We were not managing their, their Intune environment. And we reached out to them to say, hey, let's work together so we can identify this compromise policy. We also decided that, hey, let's onboard you to our cloud response product just so we can see and get the telemetry that we need. And we had get we started getting alerts all over the place for suspicious logins within the environment. We were then able to take the information we got from cloud response, isolate those compromised accounts. We locked the attacker out of their cloud environment, locked the attacker out of the on-premise environment, stopped the malware spread. And this is the key. In less than a minute, our SOC was able to isolate the machine from further attack keeping the threat actor from pivoting to the on-premise network. But what I get most excited to talk about is that after the initial intrusion and we onboarded them, we were able to stop 10 more potential business email compromises targeted at the customer. That is something that we do here. That pivot from cloud to on-premise is just not something that we've seen before. And if you're just handling managed EDR, managed SIM, not only are you not able to correlate the events quickly, but you're probably not gonna be able to catch a lot of these things right off the bat and definitely not in a quick enough space. So. You know, that's kind of the the high level. And man, did we let our time get away from us or what? Uh, <laughs> Justin, Sean, do you uh, do you have uh, any other kind of comments that you want to make on uh, on on this kind of case study? Yeah, uh, I think this is the greatest example of kind of what Mike said earlier of our lines gone. You know, as these mobile devices, MDM, Intune become the future of IT, I can say Becca's got a, couple clients were already working on 2024 plans to go full to Intune management, lose the on-prem AD systems. You know, this is the future of the lateral movement is no longer, like you said earlier, on-prem to on-prem, cloud to cloud. The connection's here. It's here to stay, you know, and having a partner and an MDR that is looking at both sides of the fence is extremely important. Yep. A hundred percent, you know, and I, go ahead, Sean. I don't have any, I don't, I, I have to jump on another call, but I, I just wanted to add something because you mentioned transparency when you were showing the screen earlier. Um, and I mentioned earlier trust. One of the mm. key things that helped us gain trust with Blackpoint was that level of transparency that was shown. And again, I'm, I'm a skeptical person. So it took many conversations, <laughs> many calls, many demos, but the level of transparency that Blackpoint provided to us and how you guys operate, that's what helped build. That was, it was one of the components that helped build that trust. Fantastic. Well, cool. Well, uh, Sean, I know that you got to bounce. I'm Justin. I'm sure you uh, have no shortage of meetings as well, but I just wanted to finish this last piece up here for those of you that have the ability to kind of stay on. This is the true Take MDR in action that we just talked about here. So there's a remotely administered agent, which is great, That, but that technology is just one piece of the pie. That identified the active threat. The human experts and the correlation of the events, we investigated, we have the ability to identify a brand new threat, took action to disrupt it and contained it. And that is what you need out of true MDR at a bare minimum. So, hey, uh, I know we kind of let our time slip away from us today. Everyone, thank you so much for those of you that uh, that are still with us at this point. Justin, want to say thank you to you as well. This was really cool and uh, really appreciate you. Thanks so much.